Hello guys, it's me again, Unstable Voltage, with another episode of How to Feed the Beast in Minecraft. In the last episode, we took a look at industrial craft power. We built a simple generator and a bat box. So in this video, we're going to have a quick look at three useful machines which we can run from our newly acquired industrial craft power. The first machine we're going to look at is quite a simple machine. It's an electric furnace. As we're now feeding our coal into our generator, we don't want to have to waste coal by putting it into a furnace as well. So we've got an electric furnace which we can run on the power from the generator. Next we're going to have a look at the extractor. This is a very useful machine as it allows us to acquire extra rubber and that is brilliant with industrial craft because you use a lot of rubber in making machines and cables. The third machine we're going to have a look at today is the macerator. Now it's a little bit more expensive to build, but in the long run it will be very useful as it has many uses and it will provide us double the yield from most of the ores that we find while mining. Right, so we're in my all familiar workshop. Now, normally in my videos I actually show you how to build these machines. I'm not going to do that on this video because you can easily look them up yourself using the Not Enough Items mod on the right hand side of the build panel. And when it comes to the macerator, there are actually quite a few different ways to build it and it would take a long time to go through all the different variations and ways to make it. Suffice to say, all you need to build any of these three items is a crafting table. So, let's just have a look at one of the changes I've made since the last video because on the last video we had our generator here and the bat box at the side of it. What I've now done is moved the bat box downstairs into the basement and replaced my copper cables with um, glass fibre cables. All this means I can run cables further without losing power and it also means that when I want to switch to medium voltage and high voltage later I've already got my cables in place. So let's look at our first machine. We have the electric furnace, I will place that here. Now, the electric furnace is very straightforward, it works just the way you'd expect it to, it's a furnace. So if you take your copper ore for example, we drop one in the furnace and it will smelt quite a bit quicker than a standard furnace does and hey presto, we have our copper ingot. So very simple machine to use, works just the way that a normal furnace does except it will run off our power. Now we're still burning coal of course, but later on we're going to be looking at more renewable sources of energy such as solar power, wind power, water power and even geothermal. So we do have renewable energy to replace the coal later on. Okay, the next machine we're going to have a look at is the extractor. Now as I said earlier, one of the things that you will do a lot if you're using industrial craft machines is the need for rubber. Now, you normally get rubber by using a wooden tree tap on rubber trees and getting sticky resin. If you get one sticky resin and put that sticky resin in a furnace, eventually that one sticky resin will become one rubber. However, with the extractor, if you place one sticky resin in the extractor, you will receive three rubber. So it's three times as efficient to actually put the sticky resin in the extractor than it is in the furnace. It does take a little bit longer and the video you've just saw was sped up because I didn't want to waste a minute of your time watching a progress bar go across. But if you've got any sticky resin, put it in the extractor. The other good thing with the extractor is rubber wood. You can actually place rubber wood directly into the extractor and you receive rubber from that as well. The third and final machine I want to look at today is the macerator. Now this is something you'll want to get as early as you can. It is a slightly more expensive machine to build because even though there are different recipes for it, you're pretty much going to need diamonds for any of them. And also you will need some flint, but it will pay dividends in the end because this machine is used for smashing things. Now there are various things that we can put inside a macerator. If we put in stone for example, it will smash it down into cobblestone. If we put cobblestone in the macerator, it will pulverize it even further down into sand. We can put gravel in the macerator, and the gravel gets turned into flint. Now one of the other things we can do, if I just borrow a piece of coal from the uh, generator, if we put coal in the macerator, we get coal dust, and coal dust can be used later on to make carbon plating, which is used in various other machinery and armour, which is something we'll look at later on as well. But 
The main reason for having a macerator is this. If you take most common ores, so for example we will take a copper ore and put that copper ore in the furnace, one copper ore will result in one copper ingot. If however we go to the macerator and put one copper ore in the macerator, the macerator turns the one copper ore into two copper dust. If we then go back over to the furnace and put the two copper dust in the furnace, each of the copper dust gets turned into one copper ingot. So by putting one copper ore in the macerator first, we turn one copper ore into two ingots instead of one. And this works for almost every ore in the game, so having a macerator, despite its many uses, is just a brilliant way in the early game to double the amount of uh, precious metals you can get from the ore you get while mining. So three very basic machines there. All of these machines are low voltage, they all have a maximum input of 32 energy units per tick, so you can only run them off a bat box or something that outputs low voltage. If you are using medium or high voltage, you will need to use a transformer first or the machines will blow up, and that is something we'll look at at a future video. So once again guys, thank you for watching and I hope as usual you found this video both entertaining and informative. If you have enjoyed this, please as always like, share and subscribe. And if you have any ideas for future videos, particular machines or items that you would like to see explained and demonstrated, please either send me a message or leave them in the comments below. And I will see you next time. Goodbye.